Why is everyone fighting? On this episode of Metal is Cringe, Alpha Wolf gets into a fight with security, the CKY vocalist punched the alien ant farm vocalist in the face, the bunny the bear are fighting with an audio engineer, Tim Lambesis is fighting with his entire band, and Warp Tour is fighting with our hopes and expectations. Oh yeah, and Corey Feldman is fighting with Limp Bizkit's audience. We're going to get into all of that on today's episode of Metal is Cringe. All right, let's jump into our first headline here today. CKY kicked off the Alien Ant Farm tour after Chad Ginsburg allegedly punched Dryden Mitchell in the face. Okay, several weeks into their co-headlining European and United Kingdom tour, CKY had been kicked off the bill following an altercation between the vocalist of CKY and guitarist Chad Ginsburg and Alien Ant Farm vocalist Dryden Mitchell. In case you aren't old men like us, and aren't aware of who these bands are, we can get you up to speed here. CKY is, if you've been living under a rock for the last 20 years, is Bam Margera's brother's band, consisted of original vocalist Darren Miller and Chad Ginsberg, uh, who is uh, one of the founding members of the band. They've been around for a long time, uh, and they kind of been making like groove rock and roll for the last 20 years. They're a pretty cool band in their own respect. And uh, you know what? They've gotten through a lot of challenges. And uh, to hear this come up in the news and it'd be one of the main uh, stories that we're talking about definitely gets my heart going because I personally <laughs> have followed this band and they're pretty good guys. So when I heard that he punched Dryden, I knew something had to be up. Now, we could talk all day about Bam Margera, and maybe one day we will. But for now, we're just giving you the Sparks notes. Now, he was a prominent member of the crew Jackass, arguably one of the most famous ones. And he ended up with his very own popular reality show, Viva La Bam. After the death of Jackass star Ryan Dunn, many of the members have gone through their own journeys. Most notably, Steve-O have gone through various treatments of sobriety and have been fairly outspoken about it. Bam, unfortunately, has had a series of mishaps and public relapses. But that's for another video. This connection helped make CKY a household name in the early 2000s. Signing to Island Def Jam Records and releasing the smash hit 96 Quite Better Beings, as well as a handful of other notable tracks that are still in rotation of skate punks today. Alien Ant Farm is a band that is primarily known for their cover of Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal. Personally, we aren't particularly familiar with the band's career, uh, but they did do a collab with the Insane Clown Posse in 2021 on a single Afraid to Die. I just find that funny, to be honest. <laughs> and they have been releasing music steadily. Check out our reaction to one of their latest tracks, So Cold, to get an idea of where we stand with Alien Ant Farm musically. It's a good video. Check it out. Now, just because we may like one of these bands significantly more than the other musically does not mean that we don't want to approach this story. We want to approach this unbiased. Thankfully, both vocalists have been coming out with statements going back and forth on this regarding the incident, and we can compare and contrast them here. And you can make up your own mind. The first to make a statement was Dryden of Alien Ant Farms. I wrote Alien Ant Farms. Why did it change the name so much? <laughs> The first to make a statement was Dryden of Alien Ant Farm. Sadly, Chad from CKY hasn't figured out how to cohabitate with others after all these years. They will no longer be on the Alien Ant Farm tour through the rest of the UK shows after Chad punched me in the face earlier today. I've watched him treat multiple crew members and opening band members like trash through the Europe shows and cause general drama around our camp. Before the last Europe shows, I went to Chad and asked if he had any issues with anyone specifically, and if he wanted to have a meeting with the whole crew and bands to discuss what's going on. He upended the table in the dressing room and threw his phone and then canceled their show. Today, we still had business things to square away, and I told his manager what a problem Chad was being, verbally, as well as fucking up the bus with all his messes every day for other people to clean up. Well, he punched me in the face and pretty much ran away like I imagined he'd do for all his future problems. I'm grateful for my sobriety and grateful that I didn't retaliate physically in any way whatsoever. I would love these shows to continue and apologize to all the CKY fans for Chad's behavior. We have zero hard feelings for Jess and Elvis and CKY and are gutted to see them go. But I will never knowingly put myself in volatile situations, so this had to end. Dryden continues... After suffering a C1 and C2 fusion um, spinal fracture, I guess that is, Jesus, from a bus crash years ago, I hope that everything is okay in that area. I guess he's indicating that, you know, you can't, <laughs> punching a guy with a spinal fracture is probably insane. <laughs> um, shows will continue without CKY, 
and we hope everyone still wants to come enjoy positive evenings with us, including CKY fans. If you don't, we understand, and refunds will be issued accordingly. Stay safe, everybody, and Chad, go to the gym. After that, find a therapist, and maybe in 25 years, we can shake hands. Until then, though, get help. Love, Dryden. The first thing that comes to mind with this is it's snar- it's certainly snarky. Um, mm-hmm. It does seem relatively level-headed. Um, if he's telling the truth about uh, Chad, like, harassing and being rude to, like, crew members and stuff, it seems kind of nuts. You would think in a situation like this, there would be someone to to co- corroborate, co- corroborate? What am I trying to say? If you think in a situation like this, there would be someone who could verify Dryden's story on this, right? If if Chad from CKY was really being such a nuisance, surely someone else can back him up on this, right? As far as I've seen, Dryden's the only one talking about it other than Chad's rebuttals, which we'll get to. Some of them are really funny. In the little research I was doing for this, I've also seen some people say that like Alien and Farm are apparently just good dudes to work with. Um... And congratulations to him on his sobriety. I didn't know that about him. That's cool. We appreciate a sober king on this channel. I think he's a smooth criminal here. I think there's something very corporate about that that statement and how quickly he came out with it. Um, also, as like the victim, you think that like as 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 a victim of getting punched in the face that he really pun intended beat to the punch uh, before he could say anything before Chad said anything. And now when Chad comes out and says something, cause he does say something, he kind of, he kind of looks like he's in the wrong, no matter what he says, because Dryden kind of beat him to this, like this, this like narrative that's already being talked about. And like the narrative is that like Chad is a problematic person. So now if we hear, and we do hear from Chad, your immediate knee jerk reaction is to go, well, uh, this guy's calling this guy a jerk. Why am I going to even bother reading his statement? What's the point? So it seems very calculated. I'll put it that way. It seems very calculated. It seems very PR. Yeah, it seems um, very media, very media trained answer, which ironically, Chad's responses seem to have zero media awareness or training at all. He is <laughs> just going in on him. Thankfully, just a day before recording this, Chad from CKY gave his own statement on the incident. However, the statement leaves a lot to be desired and comes across a little more childish than Dryden's statement. It reads, UK CKY fans, get your money back. I had no choice and good reason for what had happened. I will always defend myself. You know me much better than that. More info to come. Apologies to the fans. The statement was posted alongside a boomer level of hashtags, notably hashtag one sided bullshit, hashtag two sides to every story, hashtag if you only knew. Like, <laughs> oh man, it's, it's wild. <laughs> Not long after Chad Ginsburg's first statement, he released a second one claiming the alien ant farm singer was charging at him prior to punch. He was attacking me, he said. So in Chad's second response to the incident with Dryden, he said, nothing wrong with defending yourself from a bad guy. If you are attacked or feel truly threatened, have no fear and stop the threat however you can. I had to protect myself. It was a split second reaction to a very angry guy muttering, then yelling some sort of profanity um, at me from 10 feet away, charging at me into my personal space, coming at me. He was attacking me. I felt a physical threat and had I not tried to avoid the attack, I would have been assaulted for fuck's sakes. I could say so much more, but situation sucks for all. I'd like to stop, rather not get into it all. It's no one's biz. This is not news, as unfortunate as the situation is altogether. So after this statement, uh, Ginsburg then started to get into some little shenanigans, including posting a image of Dryden using the N-word in Instagram posts, um, seemingly just to be edgy. I This was only a couple years ago. <laughs> Ginsburg also shared a screen cap of a past report on his 2023 battery charge. That charge stemmed from an incident um, at a show in 2002. He grabbed some guy's hand and just, and just put it right on his pecker. 
Um, so this would have been 2002 when he was still drinking and stuff. This isn't nearly um, this. This kind of has a little boomer energy to it, too, to be like, well, you did this thing in 2002. That's 22 years ago. <laughs> um, still weird. Yeah. Digging up each other's past is a super weird move, especially because Chad definitely doesn't have a clean past. There's footage of him pissing on Gigi Allen's grave, but I guess that's what you do. Um, Gigi'd love that. That actually makes perfect sense. <laughs> so what you're saying is Dryden made the fan touch his alien ant hole. <laughs> 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 no, it was his his alien aunt. Cock. Our, our, okay. <laughs> Ginsburg has since issued another statement, um, more so to address the fans. It's no secret that the UK is CKY's favorite place to play, and the ticket sales prove that as well out of all of this. Nothing hurts me more than not being able to perform for the fans that had tickets, and I deeply apologize for any inconvenience this unfortunate situation has caused anyone as we may have many losses to recover as well at this point. Till we meet again, UK, love the fuck out of you and Ireland. So with all of that context, Phil, uh, just going off your gut, who's in the right here? I think I know who you're going to say. I think I can tell already. And I think it's because you're biased. I think you, yeah. just, I think you just like CKY more. I do like CKY more, but I think I just want to zoom out of this situation real quick and kind of laugh at the fact that we've got these two bands that are arguably washed up, right? They've had a bigger career for themselves 20, 15 years ago. And here they are touring together in the UK and their egos have kind of led them to where they are today and and, and where they're at with this instance. Uh, if anyone could just tell them that CKY and Alien Ant Farm probably aren't one of Sorry, I was going to say probably aren't anybody's favorite band, but that's not true. That's probably there's probably a handful of people that love. Hey, we got we got some comments on our reaction. Some people love Alien Ant Farm. Dude. <laughs> yeah, all right. Obviously, we will report back if we hear any other follow up statements coming from this situation. Uh, doesn't look great for either of them, really, in my opinion. And I'm really shocked that these bands have a crossover audience. They must, I guess. But. Seems wild. Speaking of bands you may have forgotten about, does anybody remember the band The Bunny, The Bear? I always was aware of this group, but truthfully, I don't think I've ever listened to a single song of theirs. So I'm really not sure the quality of their music. This story is a little more serious than the last one. Taken from the PRP. The Bunny and The Bear set October 26th in Illinois ended in violence. The Buffalo, New York post-hardcore group were among the headliners for the event alongside Nine Dead and The Convalescence. Did I get that? Yeah, you did. Shit. You I got can't. that, man. You I did it, dude. Freestyled The Convalescence. I was like, I am not. <laughs> you are a learned man. Matthew Tybor? That's his name? Tybor? Yeah, I guess. I, I okay. barely know anything about Sand. I remember they came out and I was like, that's a funny name and moved on. Like that was like <laughs> yeah, as yeah. far as it went. Vocalist Matthew Tybor has since commented on the situation, initially sharing a picture that bust of his busted up lip and bloodied hand and face. That post has been deleted. However, it did say, all right, I'm sorry we didn't finish the last two songs of our set tonight, Chicago. Y'all know I'm a changed man, retired from drama, and just trying to enjoy my family, music, and life. But the fact that the sound guy tonight in Chicago, came to stage during our set and berated and attacked my wife. That's never going to fly. Sorry, he put caps in here. I'm emphasizing where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I immediately stopped the set, would 10 times over. It's always stand up for my family. I handled the situation the way I needed to, and it is what it is. The same sound guy proceeded to hit the female promoter in the head with a mic stand. That's nuts. And then was arrested on assault and outstanding warrants. I just want to clarify that we came here to enjoy a fun night with you guys. This wasn't planned. I'm sorry we abruptly ended the set, but I had to handle the shit. I'm never going to allow BS like that to slide. Huge thanks to Convalescence, Casket Robbery, Nine Dead, Fight From Within, and all the bands who played tonight. Y'all were amazing. And I appreciate Magoo's. The place is called Magoo's. And I appreciate <laughs> Magoo's standing by our decision to handle things the way we needed to. 
And massive thanks to Mel for taking a mic stand to the head. Thank you for being assaulted. (laughs) Yeah, as you can see, we still had fun. What is he saying, brother? If this is all true, this is a pretty insane audio engineer that we're dealing with here. Um, I love that the place is called Magoo's. <laughs> that it adds a level of silliness to an otherwise very serious story. Like we were saying before, I've never really been a big fan of Bunny the Bear. Not that I think they're bad. I just haven't paid any attention. I'm shocked to find out they're still playing shows. Mm-hmm. I did, hadn't thought about that band name in so long since this article came <laughs> up. I wonder if they're good. Maybe we should check out. Let us know if we should check out the Bunny the Bear. The weirdest take from all of this. Sure, some guy getting into a fight is, you know, that's a story, especially because he's the lead singer of the band. But he comes off so pompous in that <laughs> statement. And the weird the weirdest takeaway is like the shout outs to the promoter taking the, the mic to the head. Like It's a weird uh, thing to say. <laughs> It's a weird thing to be like, respect, girl. Like, you you earned that. Like, like, <laughs> like, I don't know what he's trying to say. I don't know what he's trying to say. But, um, yeah, very strange. Next, and to close the final chapter of the physical altercations on this episode, we have the singer from Alpha Wolf, who was seemingly pulled down of the Ego Risers by his ankle by a security guard at their show in San Francisco near the end of October. According to a fan claiming to be involved in the incident, he was injured going over the rail while crowd surfing to the song Akaduma. That's a great song. The security guard just let him fall instead of catching him. And this angered the vocalist Loki. Loki? Loki? I'm saying it Lucky. wild. It's one of them. It's one of them. Luck- they're, they're from Australia, <laughs> by the way. It's all, it's an Australian oh. name. Loki. That's Lockie. how you pronounce it. Loki. Loki. The security guard was just going to let him fall instead of catching him, which angered the vocalist Lockie, who seemed to rip the security guard's beanie off, prompting the security guard to pull him off the stage onto the floor, ending their set. Let's check that footage real quick. It's crazy, dude. It's fucking nuts. And then the guitarist, he just whips his guitar at him. And it looks like he hits the singer. (laughs) So, so yeah, he whips his guitar. And if you watch that clip closely, closely, the bassist comes up and he's smashing somebody with his bass. Dude, it's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's. No one handled that situation remotely (laughs) well at all. (laughs) Um, I've also heard that the band apparently does have a habit of um, like complaining about security and talking about how shitty the venue is like mid set. I don't like I think it's funny when bands do that, but I can understand. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people who get into security. Um, I, I've, I've seen a lot of good security at shows and stuff, but like security bouncers, that whole sort of genre of human. I think they um, they're sensitive. They get into a line of work where they're like, oh, I'm allowed to be set off on someone. You know what I mean? I don't want to paint too many people with that type of brush, but I think you sometimes attract that type of guy. An update did come a few days later. This is per riffmagazine.com. The security guard involved in the incident with the Alpha Wolf vocalist has been placed on investigative leave, according to the aforementioned publication. The altercation depicted in the footage was a response to Lucky pulling a beanie off of the head of the security guard in question twice. Lucky had apparently taken issue with the guard and how they were handling the influx of crowd surfers coming over the front barrier. There was a statement released by either the venue or someone who works with the security where they were saying that um, the security guard wasn't able to catch the guy because there were so many crowd surfers coming up. In that video, he's the only guy up. So I don't know. I don't know, buddy. Danny Bell, spokesperson for AEG Presents, who represents the venue, issued the following statement on the matter. We are aware of this incident and are investigating the events that led up to the unfortunate interaction. For now, the contracted security company has placed the individual on investigative leave. The safety and well-being of the audience, artist, and staff are always top priority. Who do you think is really in the wrong in this situation? Is it security? Is it the band? Did the band go overboard by hitting people with basses and guitars, which is 
Feels it, especially a bass. That's a heavy instrument. That's like assault with a potential, like maybe a deadly weapon. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think the band's going to be talking about this one too much because there could possibly be a lawsuit, right? But as far as it seems, it looks like the company that works with that security guard reviewed the footage and felt that it was worth putting him at least on investigative leave to look into it. So, yeah, let us know in the comments what you guys think. It was an assault with a medley weapon assault with a medley weapon that's so bad we're putting it in <laughs> moving on to something a little less fisty cuffs fred durst explains why he brought Corey feldman on the limbiscuit summer tour. <laughs> in case you weren't aware over the summer limbiscuit headlined and created the loserville tour and instead of going full nostalgia they instead decided to fill the bill with a rather eccentric set of artists yeah, so this included <laughs> one of my favorite SoundCloud era rappers, Bones. They brought out Riff Raff. But the strangest of all was the opener was Corey fucking Feldman. <laughs> Famous for his roles in Goonies, Stand By Me, Lost Boys, which I totally just watched. Oh, nice. And many more. More chronically online folks may be aware that Corey Feldman has become a pretty endearing meme with his 2016 studio album, Angelic to the Core, oh. which really needs to be heard to be believed. It is quite the tapestry of influences. Yeah, this tour also gave birth to Corey Solo, which um, lives rent free in my head. I think about this solo every day. I want it to be my ringtone. <laughs> What is going on in that solo? Like, it sounds like I am playing the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I love the passion in his face. Like, yeah. he's, he's, he's voguing so hard the whole time. Like, it's, God, I wish I could have seen it. I wish I went. I love Bones. I can't believe I didn't go to that. It would have been wild. There's another video. Have you seen? <laughs> have you seen? <laughs> There's a video where, the drummer starts playing the song before he's come out on stage and like they start the song and he comes scurrying out and he's like, he like tell like he like goes in front of the drummer and tells him to stop. Sorry, that was called a technical mix up. What happened? Nobody should ever start a track until I'm on the stage guys. Hey, that's He's right. looking at the drummer it when he yelled that. that. Guess you're going to have to wait for that one next time. Sorry, guys. Moving right along. You don't start playing the song when the singer's not on stage, man. God, what a legendary, what a legendary pull. <laughs> Durst has spent considerable time both behind and in front of the camera directing various films and more. Durst even publicly furthered his ties to Feldman earlier this year when he directed a music video for him. He later directed a mockumentary for the very tour featuring Feldman and other performing artists in a piece conducted amid that summer tour that has newly been published online over at GQ. Durst was asked why he chose Feldman. His response was, My hope is that people who might not know who he is is to discover him. And the audience on this tour is so young. We're having a resurgence where I can ask, for how many people is this your first time seeing Limbiscuit? The whole place raises their hand. This is a whole new generation of people discovering Limbiscuit without it being marketed to him. And I'm such a fan of Corey's acting and what he did back in the day. I was like, man, bring your band out here and expose your music to this new audience. And if they like his music, they can look up his name and they'll find the Goonies. Stand by me, Lost Boys, Dream a Little Dream. Because every night I ask those people in the audience and they haven't seen those movies. And those movies are legendary. 
Those performances are unreal, bro. Unreal. So I said, we have this opening slot. It's a hard one. And I got some other people wanting to do it. But maybe you want to do it. He goes, that'd be awesome. So cut to, we're here. In the same interview, Fellman also commented on his own single, The Joke, which boasted the unconventional guitar solo mentioned above. According to Fellman, the live performances of that track furthered the lyrical theme of that track. As Fellman put it, the solo served a musical joke. The fact that I'm not a good guitar player. That's easy <laughs> right. to say. Right, yeah, no, he was playing bad on purpose. You paid money to watch a guy play music bad. That's sick. That's that's the joke. Another notable part of this drama is that Anthony Fantano of The Needle Drop was actually banned from attending any show Corey Feldman <laughs> plays due to his viral review of Angelic to the Core. Now, um, Corey has come forward with some pretty serious allegations of S.A. during his time as a child actor. And on the other side of the coin, some of his backup angels have made allegations of harassment and abuse from Corey as well. Neither of us really know about the situation enough to speculate on it. If we hear anything definitive or if any sort of legal proceedings begin, we'll definitely keep you guys up to date. And yeah, maybe let us know in the comments if you want me and Phil to revisit um, Angelic to the core and get our full reaction on that. I don't know if I've listened to that whole record, so that'd be that would be a fun listen through. Comment down below if you want to see us react to Angelic to the core, because that'd be that'd be a fun one. So quickly before we get into today's main story. It's time to grab your studded belts and those flat irons because Vans Warp Tour is back, baby. It's back. On October 17th, Warp Tour was announced to return in 2025, promising its most diverse lineup yet and seemingly will be headed by falling in reverse as hinted by Ronnie Radke online. However, there is a major, major caveat. The return of Warp Tour will only feature three dates in three states. Bars, June 14th to 15th in Washington, D.C., July 26th, 27th in Long Beach, California, and then November 15th and November 16th in Orlando, Florida. When asked about the limited slots as opposed to the traditional 40-plus city run Warp Tour was known for, creator and founder Kevin Lyman simply stated, my body won't be taking a ride on a tour bus for 40 cities. <laughs> <laughs> Around 70 to 100 artists are being booked for each stop of this trek, from past fan favorites of the tour to new and upcoming artists being booked. Lyman revealed that he's been aiming for some unique twists on the roster. So the pessimist in me is telling me that Lyman saw the success of when we were young and wanted a piece of that sweet, sweet nostalgia pie, a pie overflowing with millennial dollars. Uh, to me, this feels... Uh, kind of like they're missing the point of what Warp Tour was. I found it was a tour where you could give smaller bands a chance to play to a large crowd because they'd put locals on each stop, exposing fans to countless new bands in a matter of just a couple days. This isn't even really a tour. It's like the Vans Warp Show. I think it goes without saying that the lineups are going to be the deciding factor in how appealing this is. Upon initial impressions, I don't think we're too impressed. Although all, all three dates so far, though, have already been put on wait list because they've already sold so many tickets without a lineup. So people are going to go. It is working. All right. So the biggest news in metal alternative right now is obviously the situation between Azale dying, his founding member and vocalist, Tim Lambesis and the literal rest of his band and touring manager just leaving. This has been a developing story, and I'm sure there will be more to come. But for now, we're just going to give you all the information that is available to us right now. So As I Lay Dying, one of the pioneer bands of the new wave of American metal back in the early 2000s, is a band I'm sure no one watching really needs a backstory on. They were massive. They are still massive. Despite the fact that vocalist Tim Lambesis pleaded guilty to attempting to hire a hitman, to gay mend his wife back in 2014. Lambesis' wife, Megan, filed for divorce in September 2012, claiming in the divorce documents that Lambesis was obsessed with bodybuilding, neglected to properly care for their children adopted from Ethiopia, and had spent thousands of dollars on tattoos. She also stated that he had multiple affairs during their marriage. The prosecution also alleged that he wouldn't get access to their children and that Megan would have a sizable chunk of his money in the divorce. So Lambesis... Attempted to have her game ended. 
He first approached his personal trainer, Brett Kimball, who testified at a pretrial hearing that Lambesis wanted to know if maybe I could find someone to do it for him. Lambesis eventually met with an undercover agent posing as a hitman, codenamed Red, who said Lambesis told him, I don't want to see her ever again. When asked, do you want her dead? Lambesis replied, yes, that's exactly what I want. According to prosecutors, he gave the agent $1,000 for expenses, pictures of Megan, a code to get into their house, and to create an alibi. During the month of the initial arrest, the singer's lawyer claimed Lambesis was on steroids, stating his thought process was devastatingly affected by the steroid use. Lambesis initially pleaded not guilty when arrested. Now, this being a decade old, um, this is probably not the primary reason Tim is suddenly having a fallout with his uh, entire band. Uh, It would have been impossible (laughs) not for the most current members to not be aware of this sort of controversy. And guitarist Phil Sagrosso has been a member of the band since 2003, like since like Shadows or Security days. I say we just work our way through this entire timeline of statements so far. On October 18th, bassist Ryan Neff announces his departure from the band. As of today, I have made the decision to leave as I lay dying. This choice comes after much reflection, and I believe it is the right step for my personal and professional journey. I am grateful for the experiences and connections I have made during my time at the band. Thank you all to the fans for your support. A day later on October 24th, Ken Susie, who's the ex-Unearth guitarist who joined, announces his departure from As I Lay Dying. His statement reads, My time playing with As I Lay Dying has come to an end. I leave with so much gratitude for everyone who followed and supported me from my days in Unearth to this era of my career. I jumped into the As I Lay Dying camp with full knowledge of the heightened dramatic history, but had a drive to just play great music with great friends. Unfortunately, my personal morals have been tested to a breaking point. It's now the saddest thing to what could have been the greatest second chance for this band. Ryan Neff is receiving a lot of backlash for stepping down first, and I regret not sharing his decision sooner and standing confidently with my friend. He's a flawless musician and an even better person. I miss you all on this stage, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Anyone looking for a guitar player? My resume is ready. The same day, drummer Nick Pierce also announces his departure from the band. Statement reads, As of now, I am no longer playing drums for As I Lay Dying. This is far from being the end I anticipated, and I feel I need to distance myself from the band in effort to retain my personal health and integrity. I want to express my deepest gratitude to everyone who followed and supported me throughout this journey. My goal has and always will be to create unforgettable memories with my friends and write music that will truly resonate with our fans. I'm proud of what I've accomplished on the road touring, as well as writing and recording drums for the new album. Looking ahead, I'm excited to continue my drumming career and pursue what I love most, which is making music. My touring and session schedule is now actively open for new opportunities. Later that day, Phil Sagrosso made a more vague statement that read, I will be making a personal statement shortly on where I stand in the current As They Lay Dying situation. There's a lot more of the bureaucracies slash business that I am navigating at the moment, but I will share more with you once a clear path of moving forward presents itself. Sagrosso is the only core member of the band to remain on board alongside Lambesis amid the wave of pandemic era departures that saw the guitar slash vocalist Nick Hippa and bassist slash vocalist Josh Gilbert leave. Co-founding drummer Jordan Mancino became estranged from the band around that period too. Finally, a week later, Phil announces his departure from the group on October 30th. This is a bigger statement here. Thank you for your patience as I took the time to gather my thoughts before speaking on the current state of As I Lay Dying. With recent events, including the departure of band members and the cancellation of our European tour ahead of the new album release, it's clear we're in a difficult and serious situation. Simply put, recent actions have shown that As I Lay Dying no longer offers a healthy or safe environment for anyone involved, whether creatively, personally, or professionally. After witnessing some concerning patterns of behavior, I've realized that I can no longer in good conscience enable further actions that could negatively affect anyone working within this space. For these reasons, I feel it is in my best interest to completely distance myself both creatively and personally from As I Lay Dying. I want to share my full support for Ryan, Ken, and Nick, who made the choice to step away recently. I'm grateful for our accomplishments and friendships over the past three years. 
With 21 years that I've dedicated to this band, it does not sit well with me to leave or abandon what I've considered to be my life's work. I don't feel that I or others should be forced out like so many have in the past. After all that's been put into this, I believe that with the right adjustments and restructuring, our music can continue to thrive and explore new possibilities in a healthier environment. Over time, As I Lay Dying has been held back by dysfunction, and I feel that it's no longer my responsibility to bear that burden. Thank you to everyone who has shown support for me and the music of As I Lay Dying. I'm looking forward to putting my energy and creativity into new, more positive ventures in the near future. Okay, so these are some very, very interesting statements. Um, A couple times, it seems to be mentioned that they don't feel safe. There seems Mm -hmm. to maybe be some sort of bureaucracy and business issues going on. And like an overall toxic feeling of something that's not outwardly kind of said, but they talk about how there are healthy relationships and there's, there's, there's this underlying narrative that's being said that's, that's offering some sort of toxic environment. Yeah. The word morality is getting brought up and none of these members said anything about like no longer wanting to be like touring musicians. Like, in in fact, they kind of said the opposite. Like I want to get back out there and do something as quickly as possible. So Mm -hmm. the wall of silence on the matter hasn't done Lambesis any favors either as rumors of domestic abuse and infidelity surrounding him and his current wife, Danny quickly spread last week in light of all the departures. Although Danny has denied those rumors in a statement um, when she issued her own statement on October 24th. Of course, all of this has unfolded ahead of Azalea Dying's planned November 15th release of their eighth studio album, Through Storms Ahead. What a foreshadowing name for the album. (laughs) Um, Speaking on November 4th, Tim Lambesis has finally publicly addressed the matter. I needed some time to process all that has happened recently with Azalea Dying. As I reflect, I certainly agree that there was an unhealthy environment that made leaving for a new tour with the previous lineup unrealistic. It had become difficult to even figure out even the smallest details. And I admit, I can stick strong to my vision for the future of As I Lay Dying, even when others think it should go another direction. It saddens me to think about the behaviors, communication, and patterns of interaction that led up to the tour cancellation. Phil and I no longer saw eye to eye personally, creatively, or financially. Discussions during the time prompted his decision to depart first with each of the touring members deciding to leave shortly after, as they were not interested in going on without him. Unfortunately, that wasn't the order in which everything was made public, as some statements were rushed out during a chaotic time in response to rumors. So just to stop in the middle of this statement here, he first and foremost refers to the other three members as touring members. (laughs) Yeah. So I have a feeling they weren't getting writing credits or something like that. It's it's very intentional language. He doesn't seem to take any responsibility so far for a toxic environment or anything like that. Everything is like, oh, we're creatively different. We're I like the term we didn't see eye to eye financially. <laughs> like obviously the the splits on these songs are it'd be interesting to find out what the financial split was supposed to be on some of this music. <laughs> I fully support each of the guys' decisions to leave and believe at this time it is best for everyone. With that being said, my door will always remain open to discussing anything directly as I believe closing communications lead to many assumptions and problems of its own. Now, regarding what's next, As I Lay Dying was founded on persistence and determination. For anyone who is familiar with the foundational years from 2000 to 2004, more than 20 people who I'm incredibly grateful for have come and gone to help bring to life this vision I've had in my head since I was 19 years old. I look forward to building a new team and creating an atmosphere that is supportive, positive, and fosters a creative environment. Through Storms Ahead will still be released on November 15th. I am proud of what we created and look forward to sharing it with all of you. Tim has vowed to once again rebuild the group. And as LA Dying has already confirmed, welcome to Rockville Festival, May 16th, 2025, Daytona Beach, Florida. So this may seem very short-sighted to people, but given how huge this band is, Tim's not going to have a problem filling this lineup up at all. His Instagram post was full of comments from people begging for a chance to join the band. Whether it's established touring musicians or Tim whips up like a ragtag team of talented fans, this band is going to take much more than this to meet its demise. This, They're just too big. There's absolutely no way that this is directly related to the crime in 2014. 
something else must be going on here. I'm dying to find out. I hope that there's some more statements released. Now, I try to respect the idea of like, you do your time and then you don't, you know what I mean? You be, you're rehabilitated. But are you really just not that type of guy anymore because you served your time? Or are you just more fearful of like the consequences now? Um, Look, I think that people can be re- rehabilitated, but something about hiring a hitman, there's so many moments where you can stop and, and recalculate and start reevaluating. It's not like in the heat of a moment when someone is just so overcome and they make a huge mistake and like do something awful to someone you like, this is calculated. This is like when you find out someone poisoned someone and it's, they're doing it to them for months and months. You know what I mean? It's so meticulous and calculated. It just seems, I don't know. I think hiring a hitman is such a different (laughs) attempt on someone's life than like most other situations. I don't, maybe, maybe that's stupid, but I don't know. I just feel like it's it would be like knowing someone's a poisoner. Like, how could you ever fully Mm. feel comfortable with this person? Yeah. And you know what? I think proof is in the pudding. I think when you stopped in between that uh, quote there, I think you really made a valid point how he's calling touring members. These guys who have played on this record. I think that must be what really came out because this record's almost out. And maybe they're not getting the credit that they deserve for this record. And right there is where the problem starts. Maybe it, that's where, you know, discussions were trying to be had and there was nothing but, uh, you know, negativity involved. It sounds like Tim really wants to be the very focal point of this band, as he has been, I guess, before even the whole Hitman situation. It wasn't for me when I first got into the band. The riffs were really what got me there when we were talking back when I was 14, but like taking a step back, he was really like, um, I don't want to say eye candy cause I don't want to give him that kind of credit, but he was that, he was the, he was the Ollie Sykes of the bring me the right. He was the, you know I mean? he was he the was, quintessential was, front man. He had this whole front. So it doesn't surprise me that a, he's already talking about, Oh, I'm going to grab a handful of new members that already, it, it, it seems like that, you. I think you got it. I think you nailed it on the head. Hey guys, quick interjection. So a couple days after we recorded this episode, the drummer of Tim Lambesis' other band, Austrian Death Machine, Brandon Short, has also announced that he's going to be stepping away from working with Tim. He said, my integrity and character have been called into question in a way I can no longer accept. So this is yet another member in Tim Lambesis' orbit who has decided to walk away and has cited integrity, morals, things like that. Well, what do you guys think of the Azalea dying situation? Uh, would you like to see Woven War come back? Does anyone remember Woven War? Uh, <laughs> let us know in the comments below. We do read them all. And yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of Metal is Cringe. It's cringy, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Give this video a like if you liked what you saw here. If you liked what you saw here a lot, you could subscribe to us and hit that bell so you can see when we post videos. We are affiliates of a little production company called Lander. They have plugins and mixing and mastering software. If you use our affiliate link below, save a little bit of money. We have a join button as well. So if you're looking for something a little less expensive, how does $2 sound? You can give us $2 to keep this thing going. We'll love you. We'll pay you back with love. That's going to do it. We need something funny to go out on, Phil. Give the people something funny. Dance, monkey. This place is enough for you. Whoa!